So nice to see you again, folks, and we are back in the fly tying dungeon lab thing. As you can see, it's an absolute mess at the moment. Tying loads of flies for orders and for myself, uh, which is great news, really, because um, the fishing front has been dead slow. We've had this cold spell, you know, we've had minus double figure temperatures, which has just killed any still water, any canal fishing. And even some guys up north, like I know uh, Roger and James up north have had like frozen rivers, which in the UK, it's just like not heard of anymore. Um, I managed to get one session out last week with a friend of mine, Tom. We managed to get out on a lowland river, um, catch a few grail in between us, even though it was minus 10 and wading with a leaky wader foot. So didn't come out with frostbite actually, which was a bonus for that session. But yeah, we just uh, TV on, sat at the tying desk, tying some flies. And carrying on from the last fly, the Olive Perdigan, I'm carrying on tying some super simple flies that beginners can tie. They're effective if you're an intermediate to expert tire. You can fill a box quickly. Uh, the chewing gum caddis we're doing today is a great fly in heavyweights. Size 10, 12 hooks, perfect imitation, you know, four and a half, five mil bead. No problem with these flies, you'll still catch fish. The case caddies, which they imitate, are found throughout the rivers in the UK. So you're always imitating what the fish are feeding on. Trout, grail, and barbel, they all love them. So I'm going to go straight ahead. Super simple pattern-wise, uh, pattern-wise, <laughs> material-wise, we've just got some English partridge, some um, chewing gum chenille, and some suede chenille uh, glow right. Super simple. Super simple. Um, so let's just get ahead there and we'll start tying it. So we're going to go straight into the tying now, as always. Semperfly Nano Silk. I'm going to go straight down the hook. Cut the tag end off. And we're looking at going to just, just slightly above where a barb would be below. So if a barb was just there, slightly above. I've come back up to secure the bead, just to stop it wobbling around and causing all sorts of mischief. Then I'm coming back down. For the peeper, which is a technical term, I'm using Glowbright uh, fluorescent suede chenille. There's all different types of stuff, but I love this little suede sort of chenille stuff. Um, I'm just gonna grab a piece of that Get a lighter, burn the end, just to give that lovely dark looking sort of peeping caddy's head if you like. I don't know how much it makes a difference, but it looks good. And you're just gonna tie in just a small head, and wind it back up the body. Get your scissors. Cut that off, and then a few wraps just to neaten that down and hold it in place. So that's your little your little peeper started. You're getting somewhere now. Um, I did have some partridge which is blown off somewhere here it is. So we're using English partridge feather for the um, the legs of the peeping caddies, and how I've done that is I've got a feather. I've got the tip of the feather out there which gives me the fibres I want to use. At this point, when you do it this method, instead of just wrapping a hackle and pushing it back, I can control how many legs I use. So I can go more legs if I just pull those forward like that, or I can hold those still, brush them back, and I can go less legs. I tend to like it quite sparse, so I'm gonna go for somewhere like four or five fibres. It doesn't matter too much because obviously you can, uh, if there's any you don't like, you can always cut them out with scissors after. I'm going to go for about that. So I'm going to lay that across the hook. And I'm going to put two thread wraps over that. So at this point, you can control the length of the leg. So these are pretty much not far off actually. 
So for two, I can control the length of the legs. I can just, so if they're too long, I can just pull this this way and it'll shorten the legs up. And likewise, I can pull these this way and lengthen the legs, but I'm a bit happy with the length of that. So now I'm gonna put a third wrap over and I'm just gonna splay out those legs to make sure they're nice and even around the body of the fly. That's about right. A few wraps there just to hold in the feather. Trim off the excess. Come back down now, not right back down to where your thread finishes, because for the body, we're gonna use this chewing gum chenille. You buy it on a spool. I'll show you the spool, but this is all I've got left. And this is great stuff for this fly. As for colors, this is pretty much the standard color I'd use. However, if you're tying them for your local rivers and you live somewhere, say, um, South Wales and you're on the old sort of slate bed rivers um, or coal mine industry where the riverbed's quite dark, the the case caddis makes its cases from a uh, little bits of sand and grit off the bottom. So really you want to try and match the hatch there and if you've got a really sandy light coloured river, you know, you might want to use a lighter colour. If you've got a really dark river, you might want to use a darker colour. But I don't think it's the end of the world. You know, if it's, if you just use one standard shade. Tie that in. Again, to prove a point, I'm just whipping that down. It, it, it's a fly, because you're hiding it all, you don't have to be to the nth degree. So I'm gonna wrap one at the back there. Again, at this point, just make sure all your legs are looking okay. And we're just gonna wrap. But as we wrap, we push, push it back to create a nice uniform body until we get to the head. We do one more at the head and we're just gonna reach over that thread do one two a little bit of a tuck to tie it down three now when we cut this off to make sure we haven't got a sort of lump here we're going to pull it nice and tight cut off and we're not left with a lump from there it's as easy as you like the fly is done we're just going to grab a little bit of cheap varnish not necessary really, you could just do a whip finish or two whip finishes, It'd be fine. But I just put a bit on for extra insurance. And from there, four or five turns, whip in the head. And that's your chewing gum caddis finished. Like I say, you can use a variety of different colors. Um, could go down the roots of like a Dallas Callis style one and use like a cream, creamy, uh, creamy peeper or different color bodies. Play around with it, see what you think. But that's a really simple tie. Great in the heavier sizes because case caddis are quite big flies as well. Um, so if you've got to tie them in like five mil beads, size 10, 12 hooks, you're still imitating the, the, uh, the food source. Perfectly fine. So yeah. Get out a tie, you can whip those a whole box of those up in no time and get out fishing with them and uh, you'll certainly catch both trout and grayling on those for sure. As well as trout and grayling though, to be honest, um, I will give a mention, great fly for barbel as well. If you don't want to use a convention, well, the more accepted pattern of squirmy wormies, um, nice heavy peeping caddies is also a great fly for them. So yep, yeah, get out there, give it a try. Drop in the comments if you catch any fish on it.